Jesus said to his disciple, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the words you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. Hello and welcome to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host. We're glad that you can join us. Whoever loves me keeps my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. It's interesting. What does it mean to live in the dwelling of God? What does it mean for God to dwell within us? doesn't mean every time they open the church, you've got to be there. It doesn't mean we need to wear a religious goods store around our neck so that everyone can see what we believe. It doesn't mean that all of our words have to come out of the Bible somehow and quote scriptures. What it means is, I'm good. I'm good. And by that I mean, you know, kids used to wear this little bracelet, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I really wish people lived that. I really wish it was more than a piece of rubber that people put around their arm. And asking ourselves, what would the Lord have me do? Now, you know, I, I, I had a cousin who was really, really into the Bible. Well, would you like to come next Sunday? Well, if Jesus wants me there, I'll be there. I, no, thank you. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not talking about la, 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 la. Okay, Jesus, I'm next. I, I'm, I'm really not talking about that. I'm talking about making a conscious decision to make our relationship with Christ part of everything we do. Part of everything we do. Okay, well, I got invited to go fishing next weekend with a bunch of the guys. Great. Well, you know, they get a little rowdy and sometimes they get these videos and they do this and they do that. You know, Hey, guys, I'd love to come, but, but count me out for the videos and going to that club, you hear? Not my deal. Don't do that. Oh, well, if you're not going to do that, why come? Well, you know, if going fishing's not good enough, thanks, guys. Not judging you. I'm not there. Doesn't do me any good. Doesn't do my marriage any good. Doesn't do my family any good. I know nobody knows. I know. And I don't feel real good about myself after I leave that club going through a fistful of $1 bills, okay? I don't like it, not doing it, okay? 
that's kind of li living with God. Oh, well, you know, I, I just accidentally got drunk and then it happened. Like, I'm not saying I've never been drunk, but it was never an accident, okay? I'm a big boy. I got drunk, I knew it. I drank it myself. I've never had anyone hold me down and open my mouth and pour it in. I did it, got stupid, my fault. Yeah, but I was drunk. Well, you chose to get drunk, you know, you chose to do drugs. Here's what happens, baby. Oh, I wasn't in my right mind. You sure weren't. You weren't in your right mind to make the first choice, <coughs> let alone all the choices that followed that. And that challenge, that challenge to first of all, accept my relationship. If I, you know, if I, if I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. If I got so upset and yelled and cussed and screamed and hollered, and everything, well, if that idiot wouldn't have cut me off in traffic, if my wife didn't nag so much, if my boss wasn't such a jerk, I'm a big boy. I make my decision to have the Lord dwell within me. And if that's my choice, and if that's what I long to do, and if that's for the way I aspire to live my life, then I don't have an excuse. Oh, I'm going to still sin. Lord knows I'm nowhere as close to not being a sinner. But if I take every day with the choice, then I'm going to really try and conform my life and be the person that God wants me to be. When I was doing vocation work, one of the things that I did, when I went to grade schools, I asked the, the kids to say one simple prayer. You know, when I was in Catholic grade school, they gave us these morning offerings. We were told to put those on the mirror and you should brush your teeth, say your morning offering. God, I don't know what kind of glue they used on that but it's still on some of the mirrors in my mother's house. You can't get it off, okay? But I ask kids a very simple prayer every day. Lord, let me know what you want me to be and let me know what you want to do today. Think about that. If I started my day asking, Lord, what do you want me to be? What do you want me to do today? You know what? If I'm thinking about what the Lord wants me to be, I may act a little differently at work. When everyone gathers together at the coffee pot and they're talking about that new person who's such a pain in the you know what, chances are I'm gonna get my coffee and go back to my desk. Not there, not gonna be part of it. Not gonna let myself fall into, well, everyone else was doing it. You know, we hear that from kids. Most adults ought to be better than that. Well, everyone else was complaining. Good for you. You know, like your mama said, if someone else jumps off the bridge, you're going to jump off the bridge too? That sort of thing. So that idea of what it means to invite the Lord to dwell within me and to live my life according to God's law get to the supermarket. Someone's just real. I don't know what she had for breakfast, but there was no need for her to, to talk to me that way. So guess what? I won umped her. I let her have a piece of my mind, made her feel lower than the dog. Congratulations. You feel good about that? I got even with her. Good for you. Now let's say, Lord, what do you want me to be? What do you want me to do today? A lot of times living that way, people are going to think, they're just stupid. You can get away with anything. You can tell them anything. They're not going to get upset, you know, and all that. And some people will abuse that. Some people will appreciate it and admire it and try to imitate it. 
And for the few people that will abuse that good nature of turning the other cheek, for every person who abuses it, there'll be five people who say, you know what? I don't know how you do that. It's incredible. I wish I had your temperament. I wish I handled those people the way you handle them. That was really good. That's when we get to the point where someone comes up and says, I want what you have. I want to be able to do that. I have no idea how you do that. Kind of like last week when I talked about me and Mother Teresa. You'll get it. Do unto others, yeah, but do unto you. You'll get it. And that's what, I, that's what I hope we look at, that we'll start to get it. What it means to actually start to live our faith on a daily basis. I've talked to you about this before, but we can kind of use it as a guideline to our prayer life. So many people kind of get in prayer ruts, same thing every day, same, same prayers. I'm a million miles away. Start your day. You and God plan it together. Cup of, cup of coffee, cup of tea, glass of juice. You go sit for 10 minutes. You and God talk about what you know is coming up. And as you talk about what you know is coming up, you ask him and ask yourself, well, how am I supposed to act? What if this person continues to do what they do every time we get together? How am I supposed to respond if they say this, that, or the other? Starting that, Lord, what am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do today? The other thing might be, you know what? You had not seen your mom in a long time. You're not that busy. You're not that important. She's old. She needs help around the house. Someone needs to get her mail. Someone needs to change a light bulb. Someone needs to go take care of them. We can do a lot of things if we take our time and become the sort of person, you know, I really wish I would. How many times have we said that? I, you know, I really need to get better at I really need to take take time to do this, that, or the other, start doing it. It's kind of like tithing. The more you give away, the more you'll have. The more you put in the hands of God, the more you'll be able to trust God with it, and the more capable you'll become. And that's when our Lord says, you know, keep my word. You know, I will love you, and the Father and I will come to you and dwell within you. And when you deal with someone who lives to try to dwell in the Lord, they're not perfect people. They are far from perfect people. But they are people who have a sense about them and have a way of living life and a way of dealing with things that a lot of people, I want what you have. We're going to talk more about what it means to live with that sense of God is with us when we come back in the second half. Stay with us, we'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Close to Walk County Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey's over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you that I am going away, but I will come back for you. Hello and welcome back to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Byer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. A little recap. Wanting the Father and the Son to dwell within me. In order to do that, I have to get out of the way. That's tough for me. That's really tough for me. I've kind of got this idea, lead, follow, get the hell out of my way. And for a lot of us, especially men, we think we got to make it happen. And when we do that, oftentimes it happens, but it's not where we want to be. You know, it's kind of like that old moral of the story is, you fought so hard to get there, and once you got there, you realize there's no there there. I do that all the time on deathbeds. Ain't no there there. I don't care how much money you, you're leaving. Ain't no there there. I had a guy on his deathbed just as angry as he could be because his ex-wife was going to get some of his money he worked so hard for. Hey, stupid, you realize you don't need cash where you're going? You might need a fire extinguisher, but you don't need cash. What's going on? Ain't no there there. And when we try to set the path we want to go to, our ego gets in the way every, every time. When we build monuments to ourselves, they're bound to crumble. When we work for the glory of God, it lasts forever. And it leads us to eternity. I promise you that. And that's the invitation. When our Lord says, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not as the world gives peace. Have you ever seen these people? They're just, they're okay. But you just found out that, you know, your, your first grandchild, your daughter had a miscarriage. I know but God's going to take care of them. Now I've got a little angel praying for me in heaven. Really? How do you do that? How come you're not angry at God? How come you're not pleading the case of your poor daughter who's tried so many times and, you know, they finally got pregnant and now they miscarry and you put that in God? How do you do that? How come you're not mad? How come you're not hurt for your little girl? How come you're not all that stuff? You know, you got to have all this, you know, all this treatment. And they don't know if you're going to make it. I know. I know. And I want to live. i got a lot to live for. But guess what? If God has other plans, I'll be ready. Really? You know, I've been 52 years old. I know. But God's going to handle it. You know? But you wanted so much for your children, and look what happened. I know I'm praying every day that God is going to touch their heart, and God's going to bring them where he wants them to be. I tried too long to interfere. Now I want God to take over, and I want God to bring them. But you never get upset. You never scream. You never cry. You never get crazy like the rest of us. 
What good does it do? I'm not in control. I'm just trying to go along and see what God has in store for me and show up. You know, Mother Teresa used to say, we're called to take what God gives and to give what God takes with joy. That's a peace that this world can't give. That's a peace that this world doesn't give. And when I get to the point that I really believe I'm doing what it is God wants me to do, I'm not going to live happily ever after. Everything's not going to come up roses. But you know what? Whatever I have to deal with, whatever I have to handle, I'm not alone. And I know that. And that's why, you know, your house is burning down and I'm going to say, God's going to give me a tent. I know he will. That's when you can do that. And that's the invitation when he talks about whoever loves me and keeps my word. Now, keeps my word is part of this. Keeps my word doesn't mean I go off on my own and I expect God to bless it. Because after all, I'm a good person. Even if I do do this, and even if I do do that, and even if I'm not married, even if I'm married to this one or that one or the other one, or even if it's my... No, wait a minute, baby. We're not talking about his word, but. We ain't talking about your but. We're talking about his word. And when we do that, there really is a peace about it. It really does bring us to a place where, you know, it's not they all lived happily ever after, but whatever they lived with, they lived through by the grace of God. And that's the invitation. You know, and our Lord said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit who's going to teach you everything that I've reminded you of. You ever thought about that? All of a sudden, you get these bright ideas. All of a sudden, it really is one of those things that you think God is calling you to. I'm going to tell you one. I'm in, I don't know, five years ago. I'm in Rome, um, out of sorts, uh, been traveling, couldn't sleep, woke up like 3 o'clock in the morning. This is December. My dad's turning 90 in March. You know, I, we got to do something. We got to get all the family together, and we got to get mom and dad, and for his 90th birthday, we got to take the time to tell them how much we love them and everything they've done for us and how much we appreciate it. We're going to say it at their funeral, but we don't want to say it at their funeral. We want to say it while, while we're alive. Three o'clock in the morning, Rome time. I'm emailing all my brothers and sisters. All of them came back. That's great. That's fantastic. I'll do this. I'll do that. Let's get this together. You know, it was a moment of gratitude. Here I was tired out of sorts. God gave me a moment of clarity. He gave me a moment of gratitude. And we pulled it off. The Holy Spirit's going to remind you of everything that I have told you. You know, for years, I've been giving my mom and dad a birthday gift every year for my birthday. Why? Because they did all the work. I just had the birthday, right? And once I grew up, I didn't give my mom and dad a birthday. Well, then I, I got the moment. We threw the party, had over 200 people. Wonderful event. Both of them heard how much we love them, how much we appreciate their sacrifice, everything that they went through for us and asked forgiveness for everything we put them through, okay? But it was absolutely a wonderful moment. And it's those things where the Holy Spirit's going to remind us of a lot of stuff. You know, I, I, I laugh. There are a few people here in the studio with me, and 
I mean, I get hijacked by the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you what I do. I come in. I'll take four shows at a time. I'll do them a month in advance. I'll go before the Blessed Sacrament. I'll read the readings. I'll just sit with them. And I'll just, you know, ask God. And I'll just sit with them. I can't tell you what happened today earlier. I had no more idea what I was saying than flying to the moon. But it's what the Holy Spirit gives us if we realize this is not about me. This is not because I want to be on TV. I got a radio face, not a TV face, okay? I got a radio face. But the reason is because it's to bring to the people of God something I hope they're not hearing in other places and things that we need to be reminded of and we, things that we need to hear. And the Holy Spirit brings that to us. Sometimes we'll find in our own lives, Holy Spirit brings stuff into our mind and into our heart. Go for it. If I've sought the, the dwelling of the Father and the Son within me, if I have tried to listen to his word, if I've tried to show my fidelity by his love and try to let God lead me, go for it. He's going to make it happen. And if it's not supposed to happen, it's not. It's just not going to happen. Forty years ago, I opened up a tax-free corporation, served the needs of kids. For 30 years, I tried to build a retreat house. I thought that's where God wanted me to be. Never could get any traction. Decided through working with people in Rome and I need to open up a shelter for juvenile victims of human trafficking. Can I tell you that literally from the Pope on down to the Order of Nuns, to the Governor, to the Senate, to the House, to law enforcement, here it is. It's what God has wanted all along. He didn't want my plans. I wanted my plans. God wanted something different. When I became aware of the fact that I think this is where God is leading me. Done deal. Thank you. It's going great. Allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to lead us and guide us. Then that really is a peace this world can't give. We thank you for being with us. May each day bring you close in your walk with the Lord. God bless you. Thank you.